Welcome back to In the Greenhouse with Orchid Supply Store. The last time we visited, I said we were going to do something a little bit different that, uh, that I may even cut some cartwheels down the aisle of the greenhouse. Well, after cons considerable thought and safety for myself, I have decided that's probably not the best thing to do. So I, I found some more Philomopsis that needs to be repotted, but you've seen that already. I've got probably another half a dozen of, of, of the uh, Cattleya types that need to be repotted, but you've seen that. So I was trying to think, what can we do different that you haven't seen before, or maybe in a very long time? And I needed to cut some mounts. Yeah, I've, I've been selling quite a few of the mounts, so I said I, I need to, to cut some of those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I take a larger piece of wood and cut it down to size so that it's suitable for one of my mounts. And I will apologize in advance. I, I, I filmed this yesterday and the sound on it is absolutely horrible uh, because the vacuum system and the sound of the saw is very very loud so if, if, if I can't figure out what to do I'm sorry you're just gonna have to suffer through it the same as I did but I'm gonna try to figure out how to maybe do a voiceover uh, in addition to the, the sound and, and maybe you'll be able to see what I'm doing. So, let's take a look at the bandsaw and see what I do to not cut my fingers off. Okay, today what I'm going to do is do some mounts. So, we're going to size these up and see what we can do. Okay, the first thing I've got is I've got a mount here that is just a little bit too big uh, when these were cut I mean they were pretty massive so I'm going to cut them down to size first and and then we'll probably uh, make them just a little bit thinner because some of these are kind of thick so I'm hoping that you're going to be able to hear me when I turn everything on you know because the uh, the saw and the vacuum together are extremely loud, so if you can't hear me, uh, I may have to do a voiceover, but yeah, we'll give it a shot and see what we get. Okay, here comes the vacuum. Hard and extremely fast. So 
way it will get you and it does not turn loose. Okay, this particular one, I, I like the little bad spot here in it, and I'm going to make this one round. Okay, no, but before I make it round, I'm going to see it's just, just a little too thick, and we're going to see if we can't cut it down. I've got a gauge here, and I actually want it about this thing here. And what I do is I put it like that against my plate. I bring my plate so that. So that's how thick I want it. And it does need to be cut down just a little bit. So I need to raise my guide. I can cut up to a 14 inch.
shot before he stick his head around the corner many of you. He's wondering why the crazy old man's talking to himself. He didn't know I was making a video. But that's the way that I cut mouse. So we'll do something else in a few minutes. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. It, it something that I do uh, as needed, you know, every time I need uh, some mounts, you know, I'll go through that process. Uh, so, so that's what we do. Now, one of the things that, that I've been thinking about that uh, we, we did, the other, you, you remember me telling you that we had a family out in at my grandson's house and, and we sat around and we told some stories, you know, it's kind of like, do you remember when? And I really enjoy that. Now, I, I don't make a, uh, don't like a made-up story. I like a true story, something that has happened to me or the family. And we sit down and we we tell everyone else. And most of the time, it's it's funny, and we all laugh together. So I'm going to share one of those with you today. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you think it's funny. This is something that truly happened. It, it was an experience that my wife and I had. And if you don't like this type of content, just let me know. I won't do it anymore. Yeah, but if you like it, let me know that also. And I'm, I may, I've got plenty, so I, I can come up with some more. Okay, th this particular incident happened um, in the early 1970s. And uh, Scott, my son, Scott was probably three years old. And we, my, we went with my sister and my brother-in-law. And, and Scott stayed with the grandparents. So myself, my wife, my sister, and my brother-in-law were heading out to the beach in Charleston, South Carolina. A man that my brother-in-law worked with had uh, told him he could use his beach house that he had a cottage on the beach and he could use it pretty much any time he wanted just let him know uh, and and he would give him the keys and we could go down and and we could enjoy it so that's what we decided to do the four of us loaded this was on a Friday night we were going to spend Friday night and Saturday night and enjoy frolicking in the beach so we loaded up after work on Friday and, and here we go, we head out. And from where we lived in Spartanburg to Charleston, if you drive like a bat out of hell, uh, and that's generally the way I drive, you can get there in four, four and a half hours. So we left about six, and, and we're heading to Charleston. So sure enough, we get there somewhere between 10 and 10.30. And, and this cabin was uh, located about 30 miles south of Charleston uh, on the beach. It's supposed to be you know, beachfront property. So we, we were so excited. So we, we drive the 30 miles south and we find the entrance to the property, uh, a driveway. You know, it, it's a, a dirt driveway. So we turn into that and we proceed to go down to find the cabin. Now, it, it's dark. Okay, this is out in the middle of absolutely nowhere, so there's no light. Uh, it, it, I think it must have been a full moon, I'm sorry, a, a, a new moon, because there was literally no light from the moon, so it was black. So we drive down the, the driveway, and I guess it's half a mile, three quarters of a mile you know, off of the road, and, and we get to the end of the driveway, and it's okay, we're here. And we look around, and and we couldn't see the cabin. So you know, we we looked around as best we could. No cabin. So I said, okay, what I'll do is I will kind of turn the car in a circle, and let the headlights shine out, and and we should be able to find the cabin. You know, doing that. So I circled around once, didn't find the cabin circle around again, and the only thing we could see was an old panel truck. The, the type of panel truck that you see in the movies that, that the mailman, or I'm sorry, the, the milkman would deliver 
his meal kit. Very old panel truck. So we're thinking, oh my God, is that the cabin? Doesn't look like a cabin to us, but here we are. We've driven this far. It's 1030 at night. Surely we can tough it out one night. So my wife, her name is Sue, and my sister, her name is Jane. So Sue and Jane, we're going to go ahead and unlock the door and step into the cabin and, and see what they needed to do while my brother-in-law, his name is Ray, while Ray and I unloaded the car. So it, it wasn't two minutes. The, the girls come running, running out of this panel truck, literally screaming, saying, can't stay here, not going to stay here, there ain't no way. So Ray and I decided, oh, come on, it can't be that bad. Let, let us go in and look at it. So we step into this panel truck. It, honestly, it was probably six feet wide, maybe 10 feet long. I'm looking up toward the front of where the uh, the driver would sit, and, and there was a commode. I'm guessing that was the bathroom came back into the body of the truck and it had fold down cots you know, that were attached to the wall and we were standing there and, and Ray and I were kind of looking at each other and, and we heard we, we, we heard this noise we thought what is that? I mean God, that sounds like rats. So we folded down one of the cots. On the cot, there must have been a dozen, two dozen palmetto bugs. Now, if you don't know what a palmetto bug is, think of a four-inch long cockroach that flies. They're very common in the beach area. They live in the palmetto trees. And, and they were in the beds. So Ray and I just closed the cot back up, walked out the door, walked over to the girls and said, you're right, we're not staying here tonight. <laughs> so we, uh, we packed everything up in the car and we drove back to Charleston and we spent the night in the car. I mean, that, that truly was an experience. We, we got a hotel the next night, so we, we had a good time while we were there. But that one cottage by the beach uh, was not exactly what we expected. So that was our experience with the cottage by the beach. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, remember, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe. And... If you like it, of course, give me a thumbs up. And I enjoyed doing things like this, and we will do it again. So you come back now.